So, Martin, have you ever been on a podcast before? Um, never. Never been on a podcast? No, 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 no. Well, mm. I feel even more honoured that you can join yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Man, mate. That's <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Um, now, for, for all the listeners who maybe have no idea, like, who you are, Martin, and mm. I, I will not try to pronounce your last name, your surname, your family name, because I know I'm going to get it wrong. <laughs> 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 can you can you please introduce yourself to the listeners and tell them about yes. like where you're from and what 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 do you do? Yes, I, I will try to. And please excuse me if my accent or my English is bad because I don't have a. I'm not uh, usual to talk. Uh, I read it often, but I don't talk often. So please excuse me first. So um, my name is Martin Grandbard with the French accent. <laughs> uh, so I'm from France and uh, I paint uh, miniature uh, as a job, a uh, daily job since uh, no more than 20 years. And I started uh, very, very early. <laughs> yes, please tell us about like, like what, what was the first time you saw a miniature or you was it mm. all, all gaming you came across or was it like just miniature okay. painting that you first encountered? Um, everything started because of one of my cousins who painted miniature. So each time uh, I saw him and my family, uh, I remember that I I must be a little goblin, you know, always asking, uh, show me your miniature, show me your miniature. And uh, everything started here because I remember in his room he had um, made a little diorama you know with a terminator and a Jenny Stiller who is opening the door mm. uh, and then uh, I remember uh, uh, an orc track an old one you know with the, the gunner with a, I don't know uh, uh, you, uh, with a hat a, a oh. very old one from the rock trader era right so uh, everything started here, and then one day uh, my father uh, came uh, to to keep me here with a surprise in the car. So in a bag, I had my first uh, my first blister with five uh, paint, two brush, and the red uh, Mac Mike V uh, painting bead. Oh wow, nice! Good so stuff. it was a uh, yeah. And Thank since then, uh, <laughs> I never uh, stopped to paint, even if it was a very thick coat uh, and two-color miniature. But <laughs> it, uh, I uh, I never stopped since then. And my first game, if I remember right, it was Titan Legion. Titan Legion. Ah, Titan Legions. Wonderful. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. It was my first box ever. Wow. Yeah, and uh, then it was the uh, Warhammer uh, fifth uh, fifth edition. Yes, mm. with Bretonian and uh, Lizard Man. Right, excellent. Okay, so just as you were getting into the hobby, I was yeah. selling selling that at Games Workshop in the UK, <laughs> <laughs> Titan Legions especially. Okay, that's excellent. So it's amazing how many people I've met who have come through the Games Workshop hobby through the Epic system. This is the Epic Space Marine system. Yes. Titan Legions is kind of the successor to Epic Space Marine. Mm. And I, I did the same thing. I, I found I loved Warhammer especially, and I loved the whole concept of having these big, you know, large units of 28 mil models. Mm -hmm. But finding the miniatures, having being able to purchase them and afford them is just, you know, way out of our reach. So we went to Epic and that's where you could buy everything <laughs> in the box. You know, it was great. Yeah. I didn't understand anything about the rules. You know, I was very young and uh, it was too much for me, but it was great. Great memories. <laughs> Do you still have the box and the miniatures still? No, I just have uh, still the French book from the box. And uh, I still have the Imperator Titan. Right. Okay, and, that's uh, good. That's all. That's all. Yeah. Since then, I just uh, bought some miniature from this box. I tried to find one, but uh, impossible. The price are, are crazy. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that yeah. Imperator Titan is worth an absolute small fortune now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing to see how much it, it costs now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> You could sell that and come to Japan on holidays with your girlfriend. Yeah. 
<laughs> Easy. <laughs> but the problem is if I find one, I will not sell it. <laughs> you know, it's more like a, a very uh, uh, found memories of it. So uh, that's right. I express it right. Sorry again for my bad English. <laughs> no, no, no. That's perfect. Perfect. Now I totally understand. Uh, yeah, once you found it again, you don't want to part with it again. You know what I mean? Yep. So especially the first models you ever got, so you ever bought, yeah, or you yeah, fell in love with. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really important. So, okay, that's really cool. And of course, we're talking about an era where Games Workshop was uh, not only expanding and growing rapidly, but of course, it became very international, and they mm-hmm. you know, developed uh, various different languages, even Japanese. The Japanese mm-hmm. the edition box set was released here in Japan, and Games Workshop stores started opening, and of course. They branched out all throughout Europe and had Spanish, Italian, you know, French yeah. editions of the game to broaden mm-hmm. its order, audience and spread the the red wave of uh, <laughs> Goblin Green bases and <laughs> Blood Angel, you know, Space Marines yeah, yeah. around the globe. I remember in the the, the town where uh, still my parents live, uh, the shop still exists, even if it's different now, but I remember going there younger. Uh, and looking at all this uh, yellow and red blister, uh, <laughs> this book, uh, etc., it was uh, it was fun. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, so you you said you you sort of painted ever since you started, ever since your father uh, bought yep. you your first paintbrushes, your paints, and your miniatures. You first started painting, and and the guide was that must have been a massive help in terms of like how to clean your miniatures, how to prime them. The the you know the the whole notion of actually priming your miniatures before painting them. And I did it with brush. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I did the same thing. We didn't have rattle cans or anything. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I was 11 when my father bought me this. So, you know, uh, at this age, uh, you know absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Wow. So okay. so it was uh, made with brush. I, 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 I'm sure I, I, I use it directly from the pot. I n- never uh, mix it with water, and it was thick as hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and can you remember what exactly what models they were? What me- what? Yeah, yeah. And funny things is I could found uh, the same blister just a few years back. Oh really? Yeah. The same miniature, and the the blister is still uh, sealed. Uh, it was a um, undead uh, command skeleton. Oh right. You had a champion with a full armor, yeah. you know, with the sword uh, uh, and the back and the banner. Uh, the standard bearer and a musician or something, yeah. Yeah, the <laughs> musician. I don't know where 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 are uh, where where. Yeah. Is lung, but uh, he had a right. sort of trumpet. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, wonderful. Okay. Excellent. So you you repurchased those miniatures, or did you find the original ones at your home? No, it, this is the uh, original ones. Wow. That I found the same blister, the same yeah. period, yeah, and uh, the same miniature inside. Oh. Huh. So I was very happy to 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 find them because. Uh, it was cool to find exactly the first blister you had when you were a child. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Most most people's like first blister of miniatures is usually their first love. Was undead your first love in terms of fantasy, uh, or was it something else? No, no. I think uh, Warhammer was part of it. Mm. Uh, some. Some French uh, comic was uh, part of it too. Uh, it's called, I don't know the name in English. I don't even know if it was translated uh, somewhere, but it was a fantasy uh, uh, comics with uh, an elf uh, who helped dwarves to, to find their, their treasure in a, mm. in a world very really amazing, beautiful, uh, but dangerous, and uh, this and warmer, of course, uh, was part of it. And I had some uh, um, book. Uh, what is the name in English for this book? Uh, you know, when you have uh, when you made an adventure, 
literally with number. You have to go there to there to there. You can die every time. Right. Choose your own adventure, I think. Yeah. Like you're choosing your own adventure. You're basically, you know, you, you create a character and then you take on a quest and then that yeah, yeah. basically determines which way you'll go. You want to go to yeah, page 14, go to dice. page 21, you want to fight the big monster That's or it. run away or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the name in English of this book, but uh, it was also part of uh, of oh. my yours. <laughs> right. Okay, that's good. That's nice. Yeah. Into fantasy. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. And movie, of course. Mm, absolutely. Mm. And um, and so, how about forty k? Because I know I know you're you're a big fan of the forty k yeah. universe, and yeah. you paint a lot of current models for the forty k universe. Yeah. So how, what What was your initiation? Uh, where did you start with that? Uh. I, I didn't. I um, didn't play second edition back in time, but my first book was the second edition uh, Eldar Codex. It was my first book. I fall in love with uh, this strange design of uh, the Eldar and the miniature, and uh, uh, everything starts here for 40k, and uh, then. Uh, third edition come uh, to France, so I play this edition, and the book was fantastic. I remember the illustration uh, from uh, Wayne England, for example, uh, very dark. It was uh, everything started here, and uh, I had uh, also the Sister of Battle second edition codex and Angel of Death from the second edition. I think that was the first three book, uh, then the third edition that uh, brought me in, and Necromda was my uh, my uh, most beloved uh, gamer from this time. I think this is the game I played the most. Necromda, yeah, Necromda. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. I, okay. I like to burn everything with my uh, fanatic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you like to play the Redemptionists, yeah? Is it the Redemptionists? Yeah, yeah, the, oh. yeah. I, I play Isher first. Oh, of course, uh, Isher. Because the uh, miniature was wonderful. I, 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 I never painted it. I was too afraid of. But uh, Redemptionist was uh, was uh, my next lover. <laughs> you know, I, I recently got to paint uh, the Isher gang again because I found yeah. a box. Uh, Paul helped me get a box here in Japan, and I painted those miniatures, and they're still just as glorious as they were back in uh, 1994. They are fantastic. I, I still have them uh, in their box and one day. Uh, oh, great. I'd love to see you paint those. Sure. Yeah. I have to. Uh, I mean, you know, they're still, you know, comparatively speaking to modern miniatures, they're still up there equaling or bettering the standards, I think. This is amazing with um, just Goodwin Sculpt. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, they made their time, but they are still fantastic. And also, it's always a pleasure to paint. Yes, even though they're, you know, they're very sort of flat. They've got their arms sort of posed to yeah. the sides a lot, like a lot of those miniatures during that era. But it still doesn't distract from the the aesthetics, the cool looking. And the, the face where the are yeah. still really great too. Yeah, absolutely. No, mm -hmm. they're, they're perfectly designed. That's for sure. Um, so that's cool. Uh, okay, so that's that was your sort of 40K fix at the time. Yeah. Necromunda was your big thing then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm assuming at some stage, and this is probably the big part of what we're going to talk about uh, now that, that I knew you from, was from mm. your days at Rackham. So you, you must have yeah. come across some miniatures, some strange-looking models in a model <laughs> store or from a friend or something, and that got you into the world of, uh, of confrontation. How did that all yep. start for you? Uh, it was with my uh, my uh, group of friends, you know, uh, because we play together. We met at the shop uh, in the in the town called uh, Trois, <laughs> and uh, they are still my best friend today. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we played Warmer and Necromda, etc. Even uh, Warzone with one of my friends. Mm -hmm. Then uh, confrontation arrived. One guy uh, tell us, oh, it's good, it's good, uh, play, play. So everybody jump here 
we choose an army, we had just a few miniatures and we play. And then the, I think during uh, some few years, we play almost every weekend. Mm. So from uh, first edition to second edition, we play, we play, we play, we play. Every weekend, we made a sort of a little uh, tournament between us. Uh, uh, I always lose. I always finish the last. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to that. Yeah, yeah. And and it was always the same of the group who finished the first. <laughs> and uh, we finished the 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 the, the day uh, by uh, playing uh, PlayStation next, uh, <laughs> drinking beer. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a great moment, and uh, and at this time we were completely fond of it. Mm. We we waited uh, the newsletter like uh, little gremlins. Ah, when 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 to to discover the new uh, concept on this uh, newsletter, mm. and uh, then my father um, gently. Uh, oh, I tried to express myself uh, <laughs> uh, gently, gently bring us to French, um, you have some of French, um, like uh, uh, miniature or things, a game. Uh, Convention or something? Convention, yeah, thank you. Right, okay. Thank you, thank you. And uh, Rackham was here. We went here every time. Mm. And my father uh, uh, gently so. Um, Take us in the car, go to Paris with us, and then wait all the day because uh, you don't give a shit about all these things. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were like crazy to see the miniature of Wacom, uh, met the people. Uh, yeah. It was it was this during uh, maybe two years uh, nonstop, two or three years. And uh, and uh, one day I, st I started to to think ah. Uh, oh, miniature are so cool uh, I want to do that me too I want to be able to to paint like that if someone can do it I can do it hmm. I was uh, 14 15 and uh, since then uh, I painted more than I played yeah and uh, each time I my father so bring us to to this convention I bring a miniature and ask painter what can I do to improve myself? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Mm -hmm. So it was uh, this until one day they told me, wait, I called the boss. <laughs> so it was uh, Jean B. Oh, wow. Okay. And, uh, and uh, they told me that they keep my miniature. It was a dwarf from the the... The first Steam Dwarf from the box, uh, the clan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. It was one of this one, and uh, they keep it. They uh, took my number, and uh, one day they called me to tell me uh, I can come when I want to do a test. So uh, I told them that I will wait the summer just to be sure, as if, it don't work, uh, if, it, if things don't work, I will go back to... To school, <laughs> and uh, I never came back. Wow. <laughs> so, because yeah, at, at that time you were were you fifteen then when you joined? Rank? No, no. Yeah, I have eighteen. Uh, eighteen okay, years. Eighteen. Right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's during this time, you know, when I told to myself that uh, I will do it. Uh, when I was fifteen, I paint like a crazy during uh, many years until this time. Right. Wow. Okay, you really worked hard for your dream, I suppose. Hey, your dream was to work for Rackham and yeah, yeah. Then uh, I <clears> went <throat> to Paris and uh, discovered the world <laughs> because I was from a little town, you know, and uh, and uh, and uh, it was a great experience. I, I learned a lot. Of course, yeah, that's wonderful. Um, so like, so in, like in your earlier years, when you first started painting, when you first got the painting guide and you had the miniatures, mm -hmm. did you have any, any mentors, like painting mentors that like you looked up to in your, in your group or in your village or town or 
locally? Were there any guys that you, or women that you looked up to as terms of like really good painters that you aspire to? Um, no, I don't remember to be honest. Okay, <laughs> I just do things, and uh, the shop made some little contest, you know, like every shop uh, mm. to, to make some um, sort of animation. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I won, sometimes no, because uh, I was really curious, so I tried to. Um, it was a lot of imitation, uh, of course, at this time, and uh, I remember that one time I painted Chaos Space Marine, um, but it was a plastic Space Marine from you know the third uh, box edition. And uh, I made them like uh, John Blanche uh, in the second edition uh, Codex Chaos. You know, where, where you just have uh, Imperial Marines who just look more corrupted. And uh, I, I, I was always uh, fascinated by that. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember the, the guys in the shop. Uh, oh, uh, interesting, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't understand this, you know. <laughs> because radical, it was radical style. Of, yeah, a lot of red, uh, strange, and uh, glossy things. Uh. <laughs> a bit too far out for them. A bit too old hammer, maybe. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. So, okay, so you, you landed a job. Uh, miraculously through Brackham, and you got to join the painting team. Yes. Was it just you and Vincent Fontaine working together there at that stage? Uh, when I joined, it uh, Vincent was here, and mm. uh, another guy was here too, Eric. You don't know him. You will never know him because he completely stopped um, painting miniatures since uh, then, since Brackham. All right. Uh, and it, he was the, 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 the chief, the leader of the team right. back in time. So I learned uh, everything from, from uh, both of them. Mm. Uh, then Eric uh, quit. So I was, it was just me and Vincent. <laughs> and then later, uh, Jérôme Otremba uh, joined and uh, Guillaume Emery joined and we were four Full time during uh, two years. Wow. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. Now I've I've got a lot of questions to ask about you uh, about that time as well. Yeah. Uh, as course. well, Martin, because you know I was fascinated when I first saw you know rack and miniatures. They just blew my mind. I mean, I'm I'm coming from a 1990s Gangs Workshop era. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know? I, I completely agree with you because <laughs> I had the same effect. You know, uh, when I. Uh, when, and I think it was the effect for a lot of people because it was completely different. It was completely new, and even in graphic, in style of miniature, in design. It was so different. Nothing uh, was like that because it was more, everything was more like comics uh, style, you know, guys, big muscles, uh, big gun, uh, stuff like that. And no, uh, Rakam. Had a, um, had a very sense of um, beautiful design in their fantasy. It was so different. And I understand you because I think I had the same effect when I saw the miniature, especially uh, in the convention, you know, when I was young. And you have all the miniature in, in front of you. You are. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, <man. laughs> I would love to have seen that. I would love to have seen them in, in person. I mean, that would be just amazing. Um, yeah. But the like, I might, I know that they had a very unique style. Like even like from first edition, when you saw the blisters and you saw the miniatures, mm -hmm. how they were painted, they were they were not a massive. Um, they were not a massive diff in in terms of difference of style compared to like a Mike McVeigh, very bright, yeah. vibrant colors, very clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like they got the non-metallic metal sort of style happening at that stage, but very subtle. And then they just went into this real artistic. Yeah. Very deep, very rich colors, very gritty. How, how did that all start? Who was the sort of was it Eric that implemented that, or was it Vincent? No, um, people. Or how did that sort of start? The, I think that uh, the most artistic uh, style comes from Vincent. Right. 
Yeah. Um, because it was really his, his thing, his style, you know, to put all this color in just little area and then add some graphic uh, drawing or stuff like that. It was typical from him. So he, he inject this into all the team. And uh, I think that it started from here, but the non-metallic metal, you have two uh, stories because two, two uh, ancient uh, painter uh, from uh, before I joined, uh, um, each one says that he, 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 he bring this uh, technique to the studio, you know? Uh, so I don't know which one really did it, <laughs> but uh, it started at this time because they say that the metallic uh, was a problem to because of making picture. Oh. You know, because it's bright and uh, yeah. it's always beautiful on picture. So uh, they found this solution to 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 paint metallic with the non-metallic metal. Right. And uh, then it was, it, it started like that just because of the picture. It, it sort of suited it because they had a very comic sort of style to the miniatures, the paint, the painting style was very, in a very comic book style. So the non-metallic <laughs> just sort of just suited it, fitted it perfectly. I mean, you know, Rackham miniatures were not sort of wargaming models. They were sort of more boutique role-playing miniatures for mm -hmm. skirmish games and it sort of just blended in perfectly with all of that you know they weren't sort of miniatures just to paint in five minutes and put on the table they were like art <laughs> like art pieces that you would spend hours and hours to, to develop your own skills and challenge your own very you know <laughs> your painting skills to make them look like just like the photographs so yeah. in that sense i can understand that that's the direction they went with so that's really interesting because i know that you and i know we, we sort of corresponded a little bit before because i asked mm -hmm. you some questions i wanted to pick your brain about how did how did who, who painted the dwarves like back in the day who painted this particular uh, all that kind so of thing I, uh i painted a lot of them yeah uh because i first start, started with dwarves and the miniature you know like i told you uh, they keep from me was a dwarf so uh they told me when i come to test uh do the test uh the first miniature was to paint pilgrim ah oh, right yeah then i paint uh oh uh pills and beer and uh, then it was the priest. I don't remember the name. I'm sorry. You know the priest on the big uh, cauldron. Oh um, yes, I've got that model. I haven't painted him yet, but I know the one you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. And it was the third miniature I, paint, I painted. Then. So oh. Dwarves was a love story with me. Great. And, uh, before that, yeah. before that, uh, you had um, Eric. Uh, so Eric Nouveau, uh, my my first uh, boss at, at the painting team. And you had also another guy uh, called um, Guillaume Bichet. Uh, for example, he painted the, the big uh, chariot. All right, the, yes. Yeah, the cool There's a big red. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a red one. And uh, he also painted the first uh, living legend, uh, the dearth one. Uh, oh, he's called this guy, uh, this character. I don't remember the name. Uh, you know the character, the living legend on the horse. Oh, okay. I know the I know the one you're talking about. It's it's those 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 core cavalry guys are so hard to find. Yeah. They're so yeah, rare. yeah. I I would love to have that guy, but I <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, nice I forget what he's here. called now. Yeah, yeah, so. I forget too. But so it yeah. was also Guillaume. But Guillaume painted some dwarf. He painted. All the clan, the the steam uh, the steam dwarfs, and uh, then I, I it was my legacy. <laughs> All right, wow! To, to paint dwarfs, so each new one, almost every new, I painted them. Wow. Okay. Oh, well, that's wonderful, man. See, I knew, I knew you're one of my favorite painters of all time, mate. So oh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm really happy that you got to paint the best models in the in the collection. <laughs> but the ones are the best, of course. I mean, of course they are, of course. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, so that's that's wonderful that you got to paint all those wonderful dwarf models. I love those figures, mate. I, I absolutely adore them. Yeah, yeah. they are. They're my first love. Yeah. With the, I think with Goblin, the the funniest model to paint uh, from all the range uh, confrontation. So you you were involved in painting some of the Goblin range as well. Very few, very few, not so much. But uh, you know, I. Because my style was more bright uh, and less also uh, artistically than, than Vincent or, or Guillaume Emery, for example. Because I paint, you know, uh, I am more a uh, 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 painter by the book with a very, uh, very, uh, you can uh, easily, uh, oh, can I say that? I just do, you know, I do my base color, my shadow. My highlights, glaze, and stuff like that. Um, because Vincent was more, uh, like I said, uh, artistic way of painting. So he put uh, 10 uh, little uh, color on, on his palette. Mm. And then he mixed them. They are directly on the model, you know. All the base color was made like that. He mixed on the model directly tac, 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 before the paint uh, dry. And then he worked the same way area by area, but doing all the things on this area. You know, if he had to paint an arm, he will do everything on this arm. You know, the arm or stuff on the arm, etc., etc. You know, me, I was more uh, straight. Uh, I paint the skin, I paint the armor. I paint the, the what, whatever. <laughs> so uh, because of that, I paint uh, more uh, light uh, people like Sinwall, mm -hmm. my other uh, little baby, and uh, Lion, Gryphon. Uh, I paint Wolfen. I painted also uh, many, uh, oh, what's the... the Dark Wolfen, I don't remember their name. Oh, Devourers. Devourers, yes. I paint many of them. It was a nightmare each time. <laughs> With all this armor. Oh. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was so long. I spent uh, five days on one. Oh, wow. I yeah. was exhausted. And I saw another one on the on, on my uh, desk. Oh, shit. <laughs> and uh, so I didn't paint many... Um, um, dark uh, armies just a few deals a few uh, undead because uh, you had uh, every painter had the skeleton test you know because uh, uh, so they can have many and in the end so ah. everybody paints main, main between 10 or 12 uh, of this uh, skeleton, they're beautiful. All, yeah, the beautiful models. Oh man, mm. they made the best undead I've yeah. ever seen. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, and it's my one regret that I sold my my uh, Acheron army years ago. Ah. But Acheron yeah, I love Acheron those figures. I love yeah, them. yeah, beautiful armies. Yeah, yeah. Gorgeous. That's because Jean B was uh, a huge fan of of these armies. It was probably his favorite. So he put many energy in this model. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, they were amazing. Um, I think Alboran was probably my favorite all-time undead model. I mean, mm. there's nothing more terrifying than looking at that figure, especially the yeah. paint job. I mean, I don't I don't know yeah. which artist painted it, but Vincent. man, they just mostly, they nailed it. Right. Oh, he just did an absolutely incredible job on that figure. Mm-hmm. Um, it it looks like it's just going to walk off the base. I mean, that's how realistic, <laughs> you know. And I loved all that. They they finally made an undead army that really looked like it was, uh, you know, uh, came out of the crypt or it came yeah, out of the stunning crypt. stunning style. And because also um, the designer uh, Christophe Madura uh, was very talented and put superb de detail on, on on his design work. Was fantastic. The the zombie cavalry is just uh, crazy. Uh, when you see the movement, uh, oh, it was beautiful miniature. And that, that's another aspect too. It's not just the um, like the creative input from 
the design team, the yeah. concept artist, to the yeah. painters. It was just this infusion of all these ta- very talented people. Um, um, and I hope you got paid well. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no, no, but uh, op- I, um, hopefully I was young, you know, yeah. and uh, full of uh, uh, energy, positive energy, you know. I, Ooh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I was uh, happy to be in there, to meet all these people, you know, uh, Paolo, to meet Paolo Parente, to meet yeah. uh, sometimes you, you uh, Paul Bonner came. Oh, wow. Awesome. So yeah. it was great to 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 meet him, to see his work in flesh, to uh, and to meet all the all, all the friends I have uh, still today. Many of them I see them, I talk with them. Uh, so not as much as before, of course, but uh, mm. but we are all in contact, and uh, you know, even today, the work I am doing now is with and for ex Rakam uh, people. So. Uh, it's right. like a little, uh, a little cult. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We should we should point yeah. out that, that you are a, a full time commission painter. Yep. And that you do work with major companies uh, to produce the uh, you know the amazing paint jobs you see in the I advertisements and commercial side of things mm-hmm. when they they launch launch on Kickstarter or they advertise yep. through their social media. You know, they we're seeing your work on the screens. You know, they're really professionally yep. Yep. painted models. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> wow, mate, that's a, that's a dream job. Mm, yeah, yeah, but uh, I start to to get uh, older, and now I feel my hand uh, is not the same. Uh, I, I start to I start to feel pain now in my hand. Oh, really? I'm sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sad to hear that, mate. Doing all this uh, micro uh, movement uh, every day, every day, every day. You know. So I, I hope I can stand the brush uh, for for some time, but uh, I don't know. I'll I'll pray for you, mate. I'll pray for that, that that your hands and your wrists will stay mm-hmm. good forever. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll pray to yeah. Gork. Gork will sort you out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we finish like a stone hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I actually broke my wrist. I broke my wrist about oh, 10 years ago. Damn. And I thought that was the end of my painting days. I thought, that's it. Uh, sure, I'd sure. I've done something really dumb and stupid, and that was the end. And then I had my Nightmare. arm in a cast, like my wrist and my hand yeah. were in the cast. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to try it. I'm just going to try painting. And I started, and I could, I could paint it. I could paint perfectly well with the cast on. <laughs> and I was like, awesome. And then, like, yeah, just, it took about a week and I was back into painting again and took the cast off. I was back into it. So, luckily, you know, praise yeah, God, yeah. I can still paint. Yeah. You know? yeah, for us, this is the, the worst yeah. thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, this is the worst thing. And um, I had uh, a, a, one of my patrons e- uh, PM me today, like, email me to say, he had eye surgery and he had he has no you know, like the depth perception is really off. Oh. So he can't paint. He can't do it anymore. Oh, damn. But it was a real shame because you know that's a you know that's a real sad thing about us in the hobby. If, yeah, if yeah, you enjoy yeah. that painting time, you know, especially. Um and gaming, you know, it might it might affect gaming as well. Your depth perception is a big part of that, you know, when you're mm. measuring stuff and that kind of thing. So oh, yeah. yeah, thoughts go out to Jerome if he listens to this, and I hope that um, he recovers, makes a full recovery, and then his his eyesight's one hundred percent back to normal again soon. Because yeah, it's um, you know, we're not getting any younger. Um, you know, I'm nearly fifty. Mm. You're a bit younger than me, I think, Martin, by a long mm, way. Forty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a lot much younger. Okay, so yeah, yeah but um, yeah, it does make an effect. I've got to wear I've got to wear magnifying glasses now because my eyesight it's not as good mm. as when I was twenty when I was twenty. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so those those kind of considerations you got to make, and makes my my wife laugh when she sees me with these you know strange looking optical lenses on my yeah. lenses and that kind of thing. <laughs> but yeah, thankfully these kind of painting aids are available for us that we can continue yeah. doing yeah. things we love Hope to so. do. Hope so. Or be and, and I think probably for the best, probably for the better. I think you know. I hope. <laughs> um, but I noticed you don't use a wet palette. Is that right, man? Yep, I don't because I don't know. Uh, I tried because uh, when uh, when I saw everybody uh, with it, I was curious and tried, but it doesn't work for me. As uh, uh, I I need to control completely the dilution because 
uh, uh, I am a painter from uh, the 20th century. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I, I'm not in the future anymore for this. So he, he, it's finished. So uh, it's more also a, a habit because uh, I al always painted with this and I often put a lot of water you know, in my paint because I do a lot of wash, a lot of glaze always, always. And I found that with the wet palette, I can't uh, control like I wanted uh, the effect. And because also it could separate it, uh, the paint and the thinner in the paint. You know, you have some, some chemical things uh, mm. that help to keep the paint a bit um, um, gloss. Uh, or things like that, and I found that it transformed the paint also. And I didn't have the aspect effect I like when I paint. So I do a test, and I say, no, it's not for me. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. Okay, <laughs> that's really interesting. I've noticed a few like really good painters like yourself out there who don't use wet palettes. They just use a yeah, bit it, of plastic it, it, and it, or something, you know, a bit of cardboard or whatever, anything. You know, it's funny because today uh, almost everybody uses this uh, yeah. wet palette. Yeah. So when uh, they see me with my super <laughs> heavy uh, palette, yeah. they look at me like, uh, what is this guy? What is it? How can you paint like this? You're a rebel. You're a rebel. Man. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, uh, you have all this layer of acrylic yeah. Yeah. with all this color on my palette. So... Uh, some people ask me, but how, how do you do to to see the color, to understand? And I tell them that I know my color in my brain, like uh, because I do it uh, every day, every day, every day, every day. So uh, it's not a problem for me. I know what I do. I know what I use, what color. So I know how and uh, how it will finish in the end. Uh, but it's funny because uh, I look like, you know, I come with my crappy palette, crappy uh, uh, pot, uh, completely trashed. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, eh? I thought, um, I think I saw Angel Geraldes, you know, when he was back at uh, Corvus Belly. I mean, he, he, he didn't use a wet palette either. He was just using just whatever he had in front. I think he used the blister packs. Mm -hmm. blister packs and he would just mix his paints in there and you know he's you know like yourself the results he was getting was just incredible <laughs> um so there you go it's just testament to say that you know you don't it's just you know how you apply the paint how you mix it you know your own personal tastes on on all that you know you don't need a, a wet palette i use a wet palette because it's just i'm, I'm used to it now i've used it for over 10 years <laughs> now and it just keeps my paint uh, usable each time, which I yeah, find yeah, yeah. the best the best aspect about mm -hmm. using wet palette. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, of course, uh, and I understand that uh, it could help people because of that too, and uh, uh, the fact that you could have your fresh uh, mix on the palette and use it. Of course, uh, it helps, and uh, I know that me I don't need that because you know every day is like a. You have to go to paint, to paint, to paint, to paint. Uh, yeah. Uh, every day I give me some, um, how can I say that? Some objective mm. to to do. And uh, that's it. Once they are done, I uh, next day, other objective, next day, da, 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 da. So uh, I don't need to keep the paint, you know, like that fresh. Mm. Uh, I have to finish. And then I do everything. Uh, another things are also because mainly I paint um, unique model too. Mm. So once the model is finished, another one, another one, another one, another one. That's right. You're not you're not painting rank and file models. You're painting unique models, character models, yeah. Yeah. game systems, and companies, and that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, wonderful. Um, so I've, yeah, I've got to thank you guys too because I think it was a photo I saw in about two thousand two uh, of your studio, and you had it was just pictures. I think it was in Cry Havoc magazine or one of the magazines, oh, rap magazine, yes, something yes. like that. It was in Cry Havoc, I remember. And you oh, guys were sitting at your tables and you're painting, you you're painting your models, 
And I thought, yep. what are those strange paint pots on the table? I've never saw those because I was only used to Citadel paints. Uh, and then Prince, Prince Auguste, you know, the Valero, uh, it's, it's, it's Valero brand, but uh, mm. I don't know the story. I don't know why, but uh, they are the same paint that than Valero back in time. But it was called Prince Auguste. Maybe, maybe the brand Prince Auguste was sold just in a few countries, I suppose. Right. So this is Prince August, and Prince August yeah. was the was the originator before, and they used the same paints as Vallejo. Vallejo. Yeah, yeah, that's the same. To make the same the paints for them, or something like that. Yeah, okay, yeah. So they have this just, sort of internal relationship, much like um, a coat of arms with Citadel and. Yeah, yeah, it's Mac like Mac. it was rebranded for for maybe some countries. I don't know. I, I to be honest, I, I have never uh, think about it. But uh, we used a lot of this and uh, Citadel also. All right. Um, before the nightmare of the Rackham paint come. Oh yeah, no, don't 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 <laughs> remind me. But that was the <laughs> oh, fuck. That was terrible. <laughs> yeah, that was absolutely oh. shocking. Um, yeah. yeah. And then, then, yeah, then we came sort of to the, to the downfall of Rackham, unfortunately. That sort of uh, yeah. was dying yeah. days yeah. Of, of a glorious company, and it, unfortunately, yeah. They took by the bad decision to make something cool. You know, it's sad because um, we, I, I remember we had a lot of fun, you know, uh, searching what color we, we, we can do. And, and we spent uh, uh, some days uh, um, we painted, right? Like we do every day, but we talk about the name of the paint, of the color. We do list, you know, uh, which color, okay, which name. We, every painter proposed name, you know. Uh, so it was a, a friend thing, but they, they, um, how can I say that? Um, Decided? No, um, the, um, the producer was uh, a French company, Le Frambourgeois, to who made the paint. A good one. This is a good company. We made really great paint. But um, Wacom asked them to speed because they wanted to, to, to have the paint uh, quickly. So the guy said, OK, you will have this. Uh, shut up and... Uh, if you don't want us to do our job, okay, you will have this up. So, you know, in the range, maybe you have four or five colors that were actually great. Mm. And uh, and um, a fun story is also is, uh, you know, Stéphane Nguyen, mm -hmm. uh, who was a sculptor at Wacom, yeah. Yeah. and uh, was still there when I wasn't, uh, after everything goes uh, bad in Rackham. Right. And uh, he could have had, sorry, uh, a, a, a great red, a formula of the paint finished. You know, what it could be if they let the time of the company to do it well. Yeah. And, yeah. and the, the, the paint was really great. It was really... Um, close to, to Citadel, finally. Mm. You know, um, at this time, it was a, a, a Games Workshop chose a really, really, really bad um, pot. Yeah. The, uh, the one with the black uh, yeah. stuff. It was shitty yeah. as hell. Yeah. But the paint inside was really good. Yeah. And uh, what we wanted first is to have a paint like that inside. Mm. It was the same quality. Because it was made in, by Le Frambourgeois also, this paint. So, uh, and, and uh, he, he finished by call this color, uh, so it was a red, and uh, he called it uh, because he is the only person, maybe one of the few only person to have uh, this paint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he called it the unknown uh, red. <laughs> <laughs> It was fun. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, eh? Yeah, that's good history. Well, 
sad history in the end, but yeah, it was good good at the time when Rackham was really yeah. So it's sad because and I'm so painted with this paint was a nightmare every day. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I uh, bet, I bet. I did it, you know. I do my job. Yeah. They told yeah. us to paint with it, so I painted with it. Okay, no problem. As also, I did almost all the painting guide in the Cryavoc magazine. All right, right, yeah. And if you remember the first, we can't tell the name of the color, you know, because it was Valero yeah. color. So we can't <laughs> say red nanana, blue nanana. It was yeah. impossible. Yeah. So it was just a, 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 a name that may, may probably think of the color. So, of course, with the Wacom range, it was more easy. We can put the name, the, 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 uh, exactly the name of the color inside. Mm. That was also the reason. And I think issue one had the Inquisitor, the Griffin yep. Inquisitor. Yep, that you did. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very nice. Yeah. Mm. yeah, very enjoyed those a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's wonderful. I'm, I'm, and I'm glad that you're still in contact with the guys and, and they've gone on to you know, produce wonderful miniatures and and that kind of thing in different industries like Guillotine Games is probably the mm -hmm. source wow. of many of those guys that went there. And You know, Guillotine Games is uh, only, you had only Rackham guys inside. Yeah, that's it, mate. Yeah, the yeah, boss yeah. was at Rackham. He was the second uh, in Rackham. The sculptor uh, were from Rackham. The, the the guys who do the rules also from Rackham. <laughs> yep. Good in it, and they're actually making money now. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Had the good, uh, with the uh, what was it called good, again? Uh, I don't know what to say that uh, to when you smell uh, the good things uh, to do, uh, and uh, he had a good idea. It was a, uh, it was great. Yeah, that's right. He had a good good sense of yeah, what to do next, and then they they exactly. they thought of the. Um, What's the name of the franchise? Sorry, I forgot about it. The zombie, uh, zombie side. That's it, zombie side. Yeah, and they they zombie, zombie side, side yeah. and it's probably one of the most <laughs> successful Kickstarter board yeah, yeah, games yeah. ever produced in and, uh, in history. And still, so, still today, even if people say, "Oh, again a zombie side game," again, oh, but it works. <laughs> yeah, it does. The form, they've, they've, good, they've for, the right good form. for them. I'm happy uh, for them. Um, and someone told me, I, th I don't know if it was Gregoire, but I think that was like the second edition of hybrid like if they if they were able to produce another hybrid game if that, good, yeah. those rules would have been the rules for hybrid the sec ah. second version of that game kind of thing and that's ah. where those guys took that idea and made zombie side and cool. made a million bucks so good good to them good yeah. for them you know all the blood sweat and tears paid off in the end well, they made zombies because yeah. before zombie were cool <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Well, talking talk about hybrid, it's one of my favorite games. I've rediscovered it. I repurchased it. Uh, the hybrid board game. It's uh, hybrid. Yeah. I never played it. It's really good. It's it's actually it restored my um, my early impression of the game was not so good, but when I now mm. replayed it again, mm. you know, and I've really enjoyed it. I think it's a fantastic board game. Yeah. Actually, um, it's actually I think it's in some ways a lot better than the actual tabletop game. Ah. In respects, I think. Yeah, I think the mechanics are really sound and the miniatures, the whole theme of it is really cool. And, and it was a great idea, you know, like a sort yeah. of space hulk. Uh, exactly. In, more in interesting. A lot more interesting. <laughs> it had all these cards with it and, uh, and yeah, it, had just, just, it was just a more interesting kind of game to play, I think, more enjoyable maybe. Yeah. Uh, not not to say that the confrontation game is in any way a bad game. It's a really good game. I'd like to I'd like to play second edition. I think second edition sounds really interesting. I, the experience points and I find it fun. You know, it's fun when you play. Sometimes it's fun, but everything is possible in this game. So so sometimes in case it can become really frustrating. Yeah, I think it's not a game where you prepare. You know. A very precise shame of what we, you will do because it could work or no, <laughs> it yeah, could be yeah. worse. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember some friend driving crazy, you know, because uh, uh, one played um, Kelt, so he had um, a ball on the table, so it was uh, an expensive uh, character, and in front of him, he, 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 my friend played Goblin. And uh, 
they made a, a, a fight between Baal and the um, the little the frog from the Baba Yaga. Oh yes, yes, the toad. And the frog, the frog actually won. Oh, right. <laughs> Because my friend made six, 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 six all the way. So <laughs> double six. So goodbye, Baal. So it was a fun game, but... <laughs> it's, got, it's got a lot of names that I cannot pronounce. In the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone remember. I can't pronounce any of them. So I do my best. Um, but oh, yeah. Well. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dwarf number one with hammer, dwarf number two with hammer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So no, it's a great, it's a great game. I'm, I'm really glad I rediscovered it again because it, yeah, it's been one of those things that I enjoy painting. I just, I just solely painted for like, mm-hmm. I don't know how long, years. I painted those models for years and years. Didn't play the game, <laughs> just, just painted the models. It's just so engrossed with just the hobby of that, just collecting and painting them. There were so, such beautiful models, and I, you know, used to just, you know, just idolize your guys' paint jobs. How you could, how you could do that? Like, you know, you just compare that to a lot of what other people were painting at the time. It was just night and day. You know, the, mm. you know, your um, <clears throat> your approach to painting was just so different from everything else. But I think it was a it was a French thing at that time, like the golden demon. I don't know. I don't know. It was because of all the people inside. What was interesting in Rakam? Is oh um, everybody share you know ideas. Yeah, it was a sort of uh, group of madmen you know uh, in there, like we were like in, in a in a studio and uh, uh, always have the mind of thinking of um, oh we can do that oh yeah oh great oh it was really really fun because everybody uh, almost everybody participate you know. And um, it was fun because also the paint, uh, the paint area was where everybody hands, you know, when they need to breathe, to sing, to they come in the painted area, oh, right. okay. <laughs> to, you know, to Smell look paint. at the miniature yeah. uh, in the display because we had the four table right. and, and we had the display with all the miniature, you know, inside. Wow. Yeah. Um, so everybody comes, talk, have ID. Ah, oh, great. Ah, oh, and sometimes when we paint a miniature, I go to see the 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 guys of the woods and uh, ask ask them what is this? Uh, is it magic? And uh, ah, okay, good to know. You know, so we can try to to have an ID. A sculptor mm. were just near us, mm. so it was a sort of. Uh, Group of young and uh, crazy people, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, in, in ebullition. You know, the, yeah. it was uh, it was really fun. Uh, yeah, exciting. Eh? Despite uh, the fact that it was bad and as a company uh, for for people who work there, uh, the share we have we had with people was really great. It was uh, so fun. And because we were young, you know, uh, we didn't uh, uh, think think too much of uh, bad things. Finally, because the weekend we drank like uh, pirates, and uh, we go back to work and uh, we laugh, uh, thinking of what we did uh, the weekend. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because we ended always half naked uh, somewhere. <laughs> In Paris, uh, so it was fun. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> that sounds very interesting. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll let you reminisce about those stories with your with your colleagues, former colleagues, later on about naked people running down the streets, drunk, and that kind of thing. That sounds very interesting. Um, so, yeah, another question too I have for you, Martin, as well. Like in the studio, I noticed in certain battle reports they changed the basing. So, like the durs would be based oh. on sand bases. Did you guys have to rebase all the models for certain battle reports and that kind of thing? Sometimes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a sort of very stressful uh, operation. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, so Vincent was uh, the base, uh, the base leader. You know, he was uh, the one who teach us how to build a French base. <laughs> right. You know, because uh, he, 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 all the, I, I'm sorry, I will do a little, um, 
I will uh, derivate <laughs> because he also made all the scenery. Right. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. You know, all the scenery with the plaster, oh, uh, incredible. the cork, everything was made by him. Wow. And so he also had these things, this vision with the base. So he made it, he teaches us how to make it. And also us, like uh, the time we have to spend on on them too, because we don't we we don't have we didn't have the time to spend one day, you know, to do uh, the base. It mm. must be quick. So we had a. Uh, he teaches us this, and I remember that um, for the deals, he made uh, some sound base. Uh, I don't know if you remember that, you know, on the box army box for Ragnarok. Yeah, you had uh, all the deals had sound uh, base, so we had to 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 remove the miniature from their base, you know, the green and the rock one. Yeah. yeah, to remove a bit of the paint under uh, the glue, the glue under the feet. Yeah, and then we glue them on the 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 sound base that he made before. Right, so you guys weren't pinning pinning the models. You weren't pinning. Yeah, you, yeah. you weren't. You we were didn't have the choice. We have to pin to pin to pin the miniature because some uh, were AV when we painted metal yeah. one. Yeah, but mostly we painted resin miniature. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, the reason is simple. It's because before making metal mould. Yep. They need to do resin miniature because oh. from this resin miniature they produce, that's from that that they made the mold, uh, the silicon mold. Right. It was made with resin miniature. And the guys uh, who made the resin miniature and made um, for the production, they, they had a sort of number, you know, they can't do less. Miniature, for example, they had to do 20 of each model because they can't do 10 or 5. It's mm. not possible for them in terms of production, you know. Mm. Uh, so we always have resin miniature first. Wow. I so never that's, knew why. That. that's a that's big why. revelation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, amazing. Okay. So that's why, because we had this miniature first, we painted mostly resin miniature. But the more the time comes, advance, sorry, the more we produce miniature, the more, uh, the less we had time to paint everything. You know, that's why you have um, cards with just uh, illustration on it. Right, because okay. Because yeah. we didn't, we didn't um, had enough time for four painters to do everything. Because at one time, Rackham had uh, 80 uh, people who were there. So the production become bigger. And uh, so we can't pay everything. But sometimes we had a window, a window, you know, to mm. paint something. Yeah. That's why sometimes we, we painted a metal miniature because it was already in production, you know. Mm. And 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 they always keep uh, the first cast, the first metal cast, mm. always, because Jean always had uh, also the first cast for him, for Rakam, so we can uh, have a sort of uh, archive, archive, uh, an archive of all the archive made. Yes, you know? yeah. And if a problem arrives, something like that, so okay, we have the miniature, we can paint it. Mm. But time was really short, and uh, we had to rush every day. <laughs> wow. Okay, that, that's an interesting. That's an interesting thing. I, I never knew that. So thank you very much for uh, <laughs> divulging that uh, little secret of in the studio. Okay, I didn't didn't realize that. Um, also, one other question, maybe you can answer this for me too, because. Um, mm. I have a feeling that maybe they, in certain battle reports, like certainly for Ragnarok, mm -hmm. they would photograph a miniature and then duplicate that image. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, I thought so because I I looked at some that I thought they looked exactly the same. Like they, you, you can't imagine the time they spent doing that. It was yeah. crazy. I remember it was Vincent who stayed uh, with um, Jean Baptiste uh, Guiton, uh, so the brother of uh, uh, Edouard Guiton, you know the the guy who who do uh, who do the concept. And uh, Raphael Guiton, so the boss of uh, Guillotine Game today. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a family thing in Rackham. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jean Baptiste was photographed. He is still, uh, that's still his job today. Mm -hmm. And uh, he spent uh, nights because they stay uh, very, very um, uh, um, late mm -hmm. uh, to do the, the picture from uh, what the gamer uh, uh, wrote, you know, they wrote on the battle report and this and this and this. So they had to read. So to know, OK, uh, for example, you have um, a unit of, uh, I don't know, uh, steam dwarves. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Where you have 20 of them. Uh, so they, they do picture of the rank. Um, of the first rank, then picture of the rank behind, and then it was a uh, oh, sorry. like a computer generated image that was duplicated for the purposes of photography and that kind of thing. Yeah, so yes, really it cutting edge technology in that in that regard. Like no one else was doing that at that stage. Like, oh, it was, it was so like long. Really... They spent so much time. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine that was painstaking, but they did it so beautifully that you just couldn't tell. I mean, it's yeah because we didn't have all of this uh, about skeleton. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you had and, to paint uh, and, um, a painter, <laughs> a painter made uh, two two of them. Also painted um, a lot of uh, Hanahan models. Right. So yes, yes, from, yes. We had a lot of uh, Kyber. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hanahan yep. model. And uh, that's all, I mean. Uh, so, yes, it was a trick they had to do. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. With uh, endless night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I bet. Wow, that's incredible. Well, um, well, thank you very much again, Martin, for your time today. I know you're very busy. Yeah, and, you're welcome. <laughs> and I really appreciate you coming onto the Chronic Command to tell us all about your time in the hobby, especially during your painting adventure. And now that's become your full-time career and the love of your life, which is awesome. And uh, I just want to thank you for being such a massive inspiration for someone like me, mate, who really enjoyed you. your work at Rackham. And you continue to um, you always continue to impress me with uh, the paint jobs you produce uh, for your personal collection or for the companies you work for. So thanks again for today, mate. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, thanks, Martin. Take care. And Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Yeah, yeah, of course. You too and everybody. <laughs> okay, thanks, Martin. Take care. Bye-bye, mate. Bye-bye. See you next time. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs>